A little bit more of that sell off continuing today. Remember, Asia also giving a decidedly negative handover, uh, a lot of swings again in Japan. And over in Switzerland, there's a key vote, especially in the upper, upper house, to deal with this Swiss banking secrecy uh, rule that has certainly given Swiss banks quite a bit of advantage. Wondering what the outcome could mean for some of these uh, banks out there. Let's talk about this and much more. David Costa, Dean at Robert Kennedy College, joining us from Zurich, and uh, Rob Ash been still with us as well. Very nice to see you, David. So what do you think is going to happen and how is that going to impact your uh, thoughts about Swiss banks? Well, there is a first world block, which is the, the parliamentary commission, which had to vote about the draft, uh, actually refused the initial draft, uh, at a very tight vote of seven against uh, six pro. So there are several options here, and, but uh, there is a lot of lobbying going on, I'm, I'm told, uh, from the Swiss banks, which want uh, this resolution to pass, because they want to clear the way to what is the new Swiss banking model, which is not much centered about secrecy, but more about security and stability. So there are quite possible outcomes, but the most likely outcome is uh, eventually there will be a pass of the law. If not immediately, there will be some modification because actually what the parliament is looking at is more detail. But in principle, it is quite clear that Swiss banking security is somehow already gone. Yeah, but uh, this, uh, much of this has already been flagged and a lot of people we talked to say they, they have adapted, therefore have a new business model. Does that work? Well, at the moment, there is this adaptation, which is essentially looking at Asia, looking at other markets. I mean, I don't think U.S. as a market is interested for private banking at all for Sweden for quite a few years. So I would agree that banks itself, here could be an opportunity, some of the Swiss banks, which might have lost recently on valuation, on, on pricing, because of this uncertainty, they have already moved on, essentially. But on the principle of uh, letting uh, another government to sort of dictate uh, uh, a unilateral agreement about secrecy to get this dispensation for one year and provide it that it could set a precedence to see that uh, the competitiveness of the Swiss market for many of the those new markets might be in question and we don't know if this model will allow for long term but we know that the secrecy model has worked for over 17 years. David, I think that's actually my, my concern there, that if they do move forward in terms of removing secrecy in Switzerland, what sort of impact would that have, in your view, on some of the other tax havens across Europe? And, and the second part of that question is if they go forward there and remove secrecy, what sort of impact would that have on asset prices? Because the banks obviously hold uh, significant numbers of assets, and if they see deposit flow or just deposit flight due to this, uh, they would have to sell down their assets as well. Well, I think uh, it's a matter of sight. And Switzerland, obviously, is the biggest uh, offshore center, if we can call it so, in Europe. Even though Switzerland doesn't consider itself really offshore, uh, all the other jurisdictions we have in Europe, particularly the Channel Islands, are much minor in terms of size to be, for example, targeted. And actually, what happened in Switzerland is that everything started from the U.S. Uh, finding some of the banks actively going and looking for business in the United States, which then creates really a present of having. Uh, a criminal activity happening in the United States, or oh, that is what the, the risk here is, is that if Sweden doesn't pass the dispensation for the banking secret, there could be more indictments of banks, which will have catastrophic results for the business of those banks. In terms of assets, as I said, I think that much of the, of the U.S. business, much of the secrecy business in general, has already gone by by a few years uh, because of the switch on the business model and because of, really, the, the, the tie down of all governments across Europe, but also U.S., of course, that need a lot of money now, and they want to have a really calm down on all tax uh, evasion throughout the world. So Sweden had to cooperate with a number of uh, European uh, governments already. There are some, some arrangements in place, but the U.S. situation seems to be very special because of this risk of an indictment, a criminal indictment of some of the major yeah. Swiss banks. So if uh, criminal indictments are the level of uh, punitive action that some of these banks could face, then does this mean that it's actually better for investors to stay away from Swiss banks for the time being? 
Well, there is, there is a risk. I mean, uh, there is a potential risk. Uh, it, it depends really much on what happens because obviously the interest of the U.S. Uh, is really to receive money, not just to have an indictment. Uh, but there is uh, a lot of uh, uh, scenarios discussed here in Switzerland, and some of the banks even don't want to think about a plan B. So it's pretty much uh, uh, lobbying up to the last minute to get this going through for the deadline, which would be uh, the 1st of July. So there is a certainly a risk which could present an opportunity, but again, there is a, a potential risk because an indictment for a Swiss bank by the U.S. government will, will potentially be uh, as, as seen here in Switzerland as the hand of that bank, uh, at the end of the business of that bank, because much of the business will flow away if that happens. And it's already as a precedent in Switzerland for a smaller bank, which essentially have been sold as a result of an indict indictment. So that is a risk now, but it's also present an opportunity, and I think that the biggest bank particularly will have a plan B or a way to get out uh, and uh, finalize this agreement with the United States. Yeah, maybe it's, it'll become the big bang of Switzerland uh, in the months to come. Thank you so much for that. Very nice to see you. Uh, you have a great day there over in Zurich. David Costa of Robert Kennedy College, and many thanks to Rob Aspen of Standard Charter Bank Wealth Management Group as well. Certainly a busy day. Let's find out what Stefan Padronzi is up to. Good morning, Stefan.